Dick Cheney sat down for an interview with Jake Tapper on CNN, and uh, Jake Tapper actually did a pretty good job holding his feet to the fire. You're going to see a bunch of lies here from Cheney, and then also at the end, he's going to pretend like Iraq was in great shape when we were there. Newsweek reporter Leah McGrath Goodman tweeted last night mm -hmm. that according to a senior Goldman Sachs uh, official, in a private talk, you told Goldman Sachs top brass while you were still vice president that the plan was to invade Iraq and Iran together. And Cheney told Goldman Sachs bankers not doing a dual attack was his biggest regret. Banker says a statement was met with stunned silence. Is that true? Never happened. Never happened? Nope. Is that a regret of yours, not attacking Iraq and Iran at the same time? I, I think uh, um, Iran is a special case with respect to nuclear capability. But as I was a strong believer that uh, if we had to, we should use military force to stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons. I but still it, believe that. But it never came to I that. Never, you never advocated for that. We never got to that point. Never got to that point. Yeah, and, okay. and Goldman Sachs, um, I don't mean to knock the firm. I've got some good friends there, but I've never had a session where I did that with anybody. A new Wall Street Journal poll shows, shows that 71% uh, of the American people to Iraq was not worth it. Now, you've been out there very forcefully in the last few weeks talking about what you think is a mistake by President Obama in Iraq. How do you respond to the vast majority of the American public who disagrees with you and, frankly, looks at some of the decisions made after the decision to go into Iraq, looks at those decisions and thinks, Vice President Cheney's not the guy who should be giving advice on Iraq. No, listen, we made good decisions. Uh, remember the problem we had in the aftermath of 9-11. We'd had 19 guys with airline tickets and box cutters come here and kill 3,000 Americans on 9-11. And in the aftermath of that, we were especially concerned about a linkage, a hookup, between terrorism on the one hand and weapons of mass destruction on the other, nuclear or gas. Let's, or, let's, but, let's, but, but that was at the heart of the analysis. But let's not go into the WMD. No, I, but you've got to understand that the problem we face now um, is that we're in a situation where that threat is even greater where the uh, spread of terrorism is significantly greater than it was on 9-11. We used to have to worry about Afghanistan. Now it runs all the way across North Africa as well. But do we you used think to have the decisions worry. that you made, your administration, really had nothing to do with what's going on in Iraq right now? I think when we left office, we had in Iraq a very stable situation. Barack Obama said as much. We put together a program with the surge, the decision the president made, and implemented it in 07 08. And by the time we left office, Iraq was in relatively good shape. By the time we left office, Iraq was in relatively good shape. Nothing can be further from the truth. In fact, Think Progress had an article about this where they laid out from press reports at the time exactly what was happening in Iraq around that time. And you know what it was? A smorgasbord of car bombs. They said on this day there were six bombs and X amount of people died. On that day there were five bombs and X amount of people died. Uh, it's during the mid-2000s when we were there, there was 25,000 people that died in one year, and then another year was 11,000, and they just lay out everything. All the casualties, all the different attacks, uh, the, the different kinds of violent outbreaks that were occurring. Of course, you have the Sunnis versus the Shiites, and what's uh, a civil war. We see that going on again right now, a different iteration of it. We also have the Kurds in the north who are fighting against both of them, and they want to be independent. Then we have us in the middle of it going... <laughs> What are we doing here? What the fuck are we doing here? See, this is the thing that's so obnoxious and annoying and arrogant about the Bush administration and Dick Cheney representing that mindset. At the time when we did the surge, the media across the board would report as the stenographers to the executive branch that, well, this surge is working. The surge is working. That's what they say. We've cracked down, and this is happening, and that is happening, but just know the surge is working. How many times did we hear that? Uh, countless times. I remember it myself, right? But here's what they would do. They would look at an increase in violence, and they would say, well, that proves the surge is working. Why? Because it shows you the insurgency is in its last throes. You remember that phrase? I remember it crystal clear. They would say, oh, no, no, the increased violence means we're winning because it shows you the insurgency is getting desperate and they're in their last throes. And the media would report it as if that's a fact. Well, we now know the surge is working because violence has increased by 37% in Iraq this month. But then you know what else they would do? 
when the violence would go down, they would say, Oh, see that? The surge is working. We have peace now. But wait, you just set up a non-falsifiable claim. You say evidence of the surge working is if violence increases and if violence decreases. And the whole time, violence will go up, down, up, down, up, down, and they go, see? Every time it's evidence that the surge is working. But that doesn't make any sense! That defies this thing called... What is it again? I can't remember. Logic. It defies logic. Okay. But see, it's propaganda 101, man. Dick Cheney goes out there, nope, nope, uh, Iraq was in good shape when we were there. It was a utopia, really. Everybody had a, a, a puppy dog, and there would be rainbows every night, and we would hold, sang, hold hands and sing Kumbaya by the campfire, and the uh, American soldiers were handing out flowers to young Iraqi children. And Stop it! We know it's bullshit. And I love how uh, Cheney just brushes off the most substantive criticism you can imagine. Uh, Mr. Cheney, how do you feel about 71% of the American people being against the Iraq War? Quote, we made good decisions. Oh, did you? Oh, did you? Whatever happened to that thing called democracy? How your job is to shut the fuck up, take your personal feelings out of it, and carry out the bidding of the people who elected you. You know, democracy. He's like, no, no, I don't care about that. I prefer being a fascist dictator and a tyrant, and that's how I act. Remember when he when he was brought, this question was brought up to him before he he just responded so, and at the time it was even higher ninety percent or something against the Iraq War. He's like so, I don't care, I don't care. I do whatever the fuck I want to do because I'm Dick Cheney, bitch. Well, that's why we call you Darth Vader Cheney because you were one of the biggest mistakes the country's ever made. And then uh, final thing, does anybody believe him about the Iraq Iran thing? A reporter said uh, that when he was speaking to Goldman Sachs, he mentioned, well, we wanted to do a dual war, Iraq-Iran, and we never did Iran. That's my biggest regret. Does that, uh, what, let me ask you, what motivation would the reporter have to lie about that? What motivation? There's already enough negative pr Cheney press out there. He's one, one of the most hated people in the country, rightfully so. There's no need to pile on and be like, oh, he also wanted to invade this other place. We knew you wanted to, we know you want to invade everywhere anyway. You wanted to go into Syria when that came up recently, Ukraine when that came up recently, and now Iraq again. Everything, every war you meet, you're in favor of. You're like Bill Crystal. But now he's doing a tap dance. No, 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 I didn't say that I wanted to go into Iraq and Iran. Look at the news coverage at the time. There would be, uh, during the Bush administration, uh, the United Nations and the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, which looks into nuclear power all around the world and regulates, right? They would release uh, reports saying Iran is not creating a nuclear bomb. They have no nuclear bomb program. The only nuclear energy that they have is simply for power, for the power grid for their citizens. And they would... All the time, whenever there was a report, it would just be that same report, one after another. And every single time, the IAEA would say, no, no, there's no, there's no bomb program. And what would Bush and Cheney say? Oh my God, we need to invade Iran, they're creating a nuclear bomb. And the IAEA was like, what the fuck are you talking about? They're like, nope, see, they're creating a nuclear bomb, so we gotta invade, we gotta go in there. We cannot allow Iran to have a, a nuclear weapon because uh, we don't want uh, Israel to be threatened and yada, 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 yada. All bullshit, all lies. They weren't doing it. They weren't, but they were fear-mongering because they wanted to go in there, okay? Dick Cheney, every day he proves it, again and again, a profoundly dangerous man.